welcome to this video tutorial from Salax Power. Today we're going to focus on the connection between your inverter and the Salax Cloud. It's our latest online monitoring platform which was launched uh, early in 2018. The first thing you need to do obviously is to plug the device into the inverter which you can see demonstrated here. Once you've done that, you then go to a wireless enabled device that can be a tablet or a laptop or a PC, whichever you choose. Uh, the first thing you need to do, uh, once you have um, opened up a browser window there, is go to your available list of Wi-Fi networks and you'll see one there that is prefixed SolarX with a, with a number that follows it. That's the uh, device number. So you connect to that and you can see there that it's connected. Um, you then need to enter an IP address. Uh, this is a standard IP address. It applies to all um, of our devices, which is uh, 5.8.8.8. Um, it will prompt you for a username and password. It is admin in lowercase in both instances. Okay, once you've signed in, you'll go to this standard landing page here. Okay, you can see there it's giving you the serial number of the Wi-Fi device. And the next thing you need to do is connect it to your home Wi-Fi network. So you open the list of networks. Now in this case, our network here is called SolarX. Um, yours will be obviously whatever it is you normally connect to. Once you've selected that, you put in the Wi-Fi key. So this is your normal wireless password. Okay, so once that's entered, you save that. Okay, so that's essentially it. Um, that basically is you connecting your inverter to your home broadband router so that the data is transferred across and then it is sent online to the cloud for processing. Okay so now we're going to move on to stage two. So before we do that um, it's, for, it's always worth going back into the landing page for the inverter and just to see that there's an IP address been assigned um, that's a local IP, so that's your router uh, signing dynamically an IP address to the inverter. In this case, that's been done, so um, we can see that. So now we can disconnect from the inverter and go back onto our normal Wi-Fi now. So we're back online, okay, and we go to the Solax Cloud website, which, as you can see, is uh, w's.solaxcloud.com, and then click Sign Up. Okay, so here we're going to. I'm just setting up a, a test site here, so I'll just put in some generic uh, entries here. The important thing is the registration number. So that's the number that um, you will note um, is shown at the end of the SSID for the inverter. So we, we saw it earlier where it's, in fact, we'll just show you now. Uh, you've got SolarX and then there's a number that follows it. That's your registration number. So I'll just complete these fields here just with um, test um, entries. Okay, so you can set your country here. I'm in the UK, so obviously I'll set it to United Kingdom. Email address is quite important. You set this up at the beginning because um, if you set up the cloud to send alerts to you, then obviously it will do so to this web, uh, email address. These two fields aren't necessary at this point, so you can leave them blank. Agree to uh, both of these. Uh, information is visible to agents and installers. That's quite important because your installer might want to keep have remote visibility of your system, and this will enable them to do that. Once we've uh, entered that, we then go into a second screen. It asks for a bit more information here. So we're gonna put in some address information in this field. Okay, the time zone, obviously, just scroll through the list until you get to the correct time zone. Um, we're obviously gonna set it here to uh, UTC zero, which is uh, time zone for London. And again, just enter, enter your country uh, name here. Now, um, what we'll do here is we will uh, complete the address details. You can click allow there. Um, it should, the map should auto locate to the details you enter. Uh, occasionally it won't, in which case, uh, in a second I'll show you basically how to move the map marker uh, to your precise location, because it doesn't always auto-locate depending on your browser settings and security settings. Just below this field here where we enter the town name, it's going to ask us for our system size, so we're going to say here um, 
we have a, a four kilowatt system, which we'll do in a second. Firstly, we're going to just move the map marker to the precise location. This is in case it doesn't auto locate for you. So, as I said, we're going to go down here and just put in a system size, which is four kilowatt. We complete that, uh, and that's then done. So, we then log in using the username and password we set uh, during the sign up process. Okay, so make sure end user is selected, it is by default. That then takes us into our account. Uh, the moment you can see that there's nothing coming through, this is because it can take five to 10 minutes after doing the uh, setup process for it to actually come through. It's actually come through now. Uh, clicked on the inverters there, clicked on the serial number of the inverter. So here you can see um, the landing page with the summary data. Uh, the site that I've set up here is a test site based on our, some of our test units that we've got installed in our offices here. So it won't mimic exactly what you would see with a normal installation. Um, you can see here, look, um, you've got one site uh, on this account. If you had more than one inverter, you could add this in on this screen. So you go to sites, uh, click on the plus symbol, and then add the registration number for your second device. So you've got two inverters on site, you can add them both into the same account and, and view the data together. Okay, so we're gonna move up to stage three, which is just to cover some basic uh, issues that people encounter when um, they try and set the uh, connection up between the inverter and the router. Uh, so some basic troubleshooting, really. Uh, there's a few things that you might need to be mindful of. The key thing, really, when you um, go back into this landing page, so we're back here to stage one. Um, once you've actually entered the SSID of your home router by going to the find AP link and selecting your home network and putting in the password. If you then go back into that screen after you've done that, you're looking for an IP address. Now in this case here, you can see that there's an IP address, a local IP address, which means that the inverter is connected to the home router. That connection is in place, so therefore you would then expect the data to come through online. If you don't see um, a number appear there, then there isn't a connection. So um, what you need to do there is um, just check a couple of things. In some cases, you will get uh, a Wi-Fi signal broadcast on two different uh, frequencies, 2.5 gigahertz and five. Now in most domestic uh, setups, those um, two frequencies will be broadcast under the same network name or SSID. So you will need to select your network name and put your password in as normal. In, on some uh, routers, it'll actually broadcast the two different frequencies on two different SSIDs. So you'll have your uh, SSID appear in this list twice. One will be a two and a half gigahertz um, connection and one will be a five. Uh, it won't generally work well on a five gigahertz, so you need to make sure you select the two and a half. If you're not sure which is which, if you've tried it and the process has failed and it, you haven't got a connection, then simply try the other the other SSID in this list that um, relates to your home network. Uh, give that a try. Again, put the password in, uh, save that configuration, and then go back in to see if an IP address has been assigned um, to the inverter. Now, another issue that you may encounter, now this is a known issue that um, may be uh, resolved in a future software update. It's something to be mindful of, however. however. Uh, the SSID, and now if you look at this one here, now this is a, a network name for a business adjacent to us, so it's nothing to do with us, but you'll see here that the uh, network name has a space. So where it has 2020, there's then a space and then the word series. We have found that networks that uh, contain a space in the SSID sometimes have difficulties connecting. You'll see why in a second. If I select this network now, okay, it's actually substituted the space for a percent symbol and the number 20. So what we're going to do literally is delete that and effectively manually enter the SSID name in this field. Okay, so we'll put the space back in. We'll then enter the password for the network and save and we should find that it will then work. So this issue of spaces in the network name is a known issue. It may be uh, fixed in a future rollout, but just be mindful that early versions of the dongle, you may encounter this particular issue. Okay, so those two things I've covered there, the SSID name and the potential for your router to be broadcasting on two different frequencies 
uh, ensuring that you select the, the correct one. Um, those are the two uh, main issues that are encountered at this point in the process.